please. Call the order of a regular meeting, Goodyear City Council, Monday, December 7th, 2009. I'd like to uh, ask the Council Member Antoniak if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and invocation. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Excuse me. Please join me in the invocation, if you wish, by bowing your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together this evening as we make decisions that we feel are in the best interest of our citizens, our businesses, and our visitors in the city of Goodyear. We thank you for watching over our fellow member on council, Mr. Dick Sousa, as he uh, is on his recovery and joins us back soon at, at the dais. And, Watch over our public safety men and women and our public works folks on the street and uh, all the men and women that serve us here in Goodyear. And most of all, watch over those men and women in the armed services as they go about serving us abroad and, and protect those extras that are being assigned extra duty in the, in the holiday season and in the months to come. Uh, and uh, watch over them as they uh, get their new assignments and their new deployments overseas uh, protecting us. So um, it's all in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. We have uh, six members of our council uh, with us this evening. Uh, council Member Souza is in the hospital. I understand he may be released tomorrow. We certainly hope so. And could I have a motion to uh, excuse Council Member Souza? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Antoniak and a second from Council Member Pizzillo. All those in favor, signify by stating aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it 6 0. Opportunity now is to uh, ratify the expenditures for the month of October. Anyone have any questions or comments on the accounts payable? Seeing none, could I have a motion to approve them, please? So moved. Second. second. Motion from Vice Mayor Lord, second from Councilmember Cavalier. All those in favor, signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? 6-0. We have one communications item, and I uh, defer to Judy Sotanic, volunteer coordinator for that. Good evening, Mayor Kavanaugh and council members. Several weeks ago, I was pleasured, privileged to come before you to recognize the efforts of several Goodyear businesses and organizations who volunteered their resources and manpower to complete three projects in our community for Make a Difference Day. Tonight, I'm pleased to be here to present another group of volunteers, our VISTA members. VISTA, which stands for Volunteers in Service to America, is a federal anti-poverty program administered by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Members provide capacity building support and strengthening programs within the community. In 1963, President Kennedy envisioned a National Service Corps to help provide urgently needed services in urban and rural poverty areas to serve the poorest Americans. I know what you're thinking. Goodyear doesn't have low-income housing, urban areas, but what we do have are entire neighborhoods that have gone belly up. Three years ago, we were one of the fastest growing cities in the valley. Now we're probably one of the uh, highest foreclosure rates in the county. You're all too familiar with the large amount of abandoned homes, vacant lots with weeds that are five feet tall. On February 17th, President Obama signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act into law, which allowed funds from the $789 billion stimulus package to help rebuild infrastructure and nudge our economy back in a positive direction. Parts of those funds were given to expand the AmeriCorps VISTA program. Our grant specialist at that time, Matt Hansen, was contacted by the local Corporation for National Community Service office to see if we were interested in being part of a pilot program of working with blighted communities to create and expand safety programs in PD and fire departments. After defining our greatest needs, he wrote a grant to assist in those areas. At this time, we would like to introduce you to the Goodyear supporting staff who will be working with our VISTA members. They will also give you a brief overview of their projects. 
First, I'd like to introduce VISTA Supervisor Liliana Schuett, who is Goodyear's Neighborhood Services Manager within the Police Department. Good evening, Mayor Kavanaugh, Council, mem council Members. Uh, I have two VISTA volunteers that are working in Neighborhood Services, uh, Rose Fisher, who is the Neighborhood Project Coordinator, and Norma Cunningham, our Neighborhood Stabilization Coordinator, and they'll be up in a few minutes to explain what they do. They're both Goodyear residents, which I'm very pleased with. Uh, the goal of the project that they will be working on is um, they'll, be work with, they'll work with city and community leaders to identify neighborhood needs, work to address those needs, and implement strategies to ensure the, system, uh, the sustainability of those neighborhoods. Would you like to come up, Rose and Norma Cunningham, Russ Fisher? Good evening, Mayor and Council folks. How are you? I'm uh, really glad to be here. Um, this is a great project that uh, we will be working on. One of the things that we've discovered is we need to get out and communicate with our residents to find out what are their greatest needs. And we've decided personal contact would be the best way. So that's what we're working on. Rose? Hi, I'm Rosie. Um, but we're, we're just going to want to pull our resources together and and um, be a part of the faith-based roundtable, try to, you know, get with them and, and use the volunteers and, and try to do what we can to help support our community. Thank you. Our second VISTA supervisor I'd like to call forward is Gail Boskeeter, the city's code compliant manager. Good evening, Mayor Kavanaugh and council members. Um, I'm lucky enough to introduce uh, one of my VISTA volunteers. Um, I was unfortunate I didn't get a volunteer, but kind of in the whole scheme of things and moving around in the police department, I got to take over one and work with her on a program that I know nothing about, so I'm learning right along with her. And her name is Rose Beals, and she too is a Goodyear resident that lives in Pebble Creek. And Rose was hired to work with our VIPS program, which is the Volunteers in Police Service. She'll be helping to build capacity by recruiting volunteers, researching grants, creating programs, and setting up standard operating systems or procedures for some of the different VIPS positions. Because of the budget restraints, the VIPS program does not have any funding to pay for required fingerprinting, background checks, and drug tests, uniforms, and other equipment that the VIPS volunteers need, so Rose will be researching grant opportunities to help fund that program. She's going to be working very closely with our city grants coordinator, applying for and hopefully obtaining funds to increase the capacity of that program. Another one of the goals of the VIS program this year is to try to create a new program called YANA, You Are Not Alone. Rose has been tasked with researching and implementing this program in Goodyear. The program will provide a senior advocacy center and provide resources to our seniors here in Goodyear. She has been working very hard and has already accomplished one of her goals, and that's to establish and distribute a quarterly newsletter for the VIPS program. She's already got her first newsletter put together, and it's ready to go to print very soon. And you'll all be getting a copy of that. So, Rose, would you like to come up? This is Rose Fields. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Council Member. I am totally excited about this program. I've been working very hard and very diligently to try to make sure that I accomplish everything that's necessary. The newsletter is ready to go, and you'll be seeing it very soon. The Giannis program, which is absolutely a fantastic program, because Goodyear is absolutely um, seeing a large increase in seniors, and we need to have resources to at least provide services for them. So I've done a lot of research and determined that there are a lot of um, programs out there, but nothing that really um, 
handles what we have here in Goodyear. So I'm working very diligently to do that. I'm also putting together a program so that when we have volunteers to come in, they have a good idea of what to say to people, what to do, because right now at the police front desk, um, there isn't anyone really to help them. So now we have volunteers that are going to actually work in that capacity. So I'm putting together some procedures and policy in place to make that a reality. I am very, very, very excited. Thank you. Thank you. Secondly, um, as part of the uh, VISTA program, originally we were supposed to get quite a few uh, VISTA volunteers, and because of budget cuts on the federal level, um, we were held back at just a few positions. So I had originally put in for a position to help with the graffiti abatement program, and uh, unfortunately didn't get that position. So. Luckily, um, our leader has had some spare time, and so she's helping me with the graffiti abatement program. And what she's going to be doing is trying to um, perfect our program a little bit and working on possibly working out some IGA issues with some of the local utility companies so that we can start getting graffiti covered up quicker. And uh, her name is Sarah Smolowitz. Mr. Mayor, Honorable Council Members, Citizens of Goodyear, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for your abiding support for the VISTA program. Um, my major task, as it has been explained, is to supervise the VISTAs and to be there for them, to take away obstacles that may impede their ability to complete their projects. Secondary project is the graffiti and a couple others I've taken on recently. I'll be working with Mr. Spies and Ms. Katie and uh, I'll be working on their de respective departments to assist them in their projects. I look forward to meeting with you. I look forward to working with you. And again, I'm deeply indebted to you having this program here. I don't know if you, t you can tell already, but I think we've got some, one of the best people out there for our VISTA members. I'm just so proud of them. <laughs> Okay, we have one more to go. Um, our final supervisor is Tim Newbell. He's the emergency management coordinator, and uh, he can come up and introduce his VISTA member. Tim? <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council. I am Othell Newbell. This is Sam Debus. Sam is here to work with us on the VISTA program. What he will be focusing on is the Citizen Corps Council. Uh, Citizen Corps Council's umbrella for CERT, VIPS, uh, Medical Reserve Corps, and Neighborhood Watch, and what we're looking to do. What he is researching for us right now is to be able to get grant funding so that um, through the Citizen Corps Council, they would be able to su support all of those programs. Secondarily, what he's also here to do is to look into the hydration stations that had been asked of me um, about a year or so ago. So once he puts together Citizen Corps Council, and along with that, he will be uh, asking one of you, because we will need a council member to sit on that council. Don't worry, you won't be meeting that, that much, that often. Uh -huh. so, so we're going to put together a council, and then we're going to, he is going to turn his attention to the hydration stations, come back with the report for us, and Sam himself will actually be doing the report, opposed to you having to see me. You know my face. Okay. Sam, would you like to have uh, anything to say? I'd just like to say that I appreciate the opportunity to be in the city. Uh, so far, the city's been very good to me, and I hope I can help in any way I can. Thanks. And, and he, is, he is of age. He's a he's kind of <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you all wonder if he's a high school student, but no, he's not. Do, do you all have any questions? Good, good coverage. All right, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to make sure, if you didn't hear, that we, we have one VISTA leader, that was Sarah Smolowitz, and as the VISTA leader, she's taken on the responsibility because we were cut short with the different people that we would be getting. And so as VISTA leader, we'll be working closely together, and she's uh, training for them. She's helping me with quarterly reports that we'll be responsible for, so her and, uh, her and I will be working uh, hand in hand. Sarah started in October, uh, Rosie, Norma, Rose, and Sam started in November. Uh, they're paid a very small living allowance through the um, Corporation for National Community Service. Uh, we look forward to a productive 12 months and, and have made a note that I will be back in six months to give you an update on our projects and to let you know how we're doing. 
I encourage you to read the next issue of the employee newsletter, same page. We'll have a short story about the VISTAs and their mission. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Any comments? From the okay, thank you very much and welcome. We'll now move to the consent agenda. No, we won't. I'll at first ask you, uh, anyone from the public wish to comment on any subject that's not on the agenda this evening? Any comments on a non-agenda item? Okay, seeing none, we'll, we'll move to consent. And I'll ask the clerk to read consent items uh, A through, let's be K, let's see. Item A, approved. One, just one second. Oops. Sorry. Which one am I pulling here? Number eight. H? Yes. Okay, H, uh, at the suggestion of the city manager and our attorney, we're moving H to the business agenda. Okay. okay. So it'll be A through uh, G and then I and J. Mm -hmm. Item A, approved draft minutes of a special meeting, regular meeting, and work session held on November 9th, 2009, and a work session and regular meeting held on November 16th, 2009. B, approve a request from Jesse Cineros, representing Bunker Clubhouse Cafe, LLC, for a person and location transfer series 07 liquor license number 0707236 for Bunker Indoor Golf located at 2333 North Pebble Creek Parkway, A-104, Goodyear, Arizona. Item C, adopt ordinance 09-1200, amending article 13-3, parking of the Goodyear City Code by adding section 13-3-11, Presumption of liability and section 13-3-12 civil sanctions providing for severability and an effective date. Item D, adopt ordinance 09-1199 amending article 18-1 civil code enforcement of the Goodyear City Code by adding subsection D5 to section 18-1-3 commencement of action providing for severability and an effective date. Item E, accept the dedication of Yuma Road rights-of-way and slope easements associated with the Yuma Road Bridge at Bullard Wash Project. Item F, adopt resolution 09-1348, authorizing the mayor to execute an intergovernmental agreement with the state of Arizona for the receipt of transportation funding from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. The Arrow Recovery Act highway funds will be used for the design restoration and resurfacing of various city-wide roadways. Item G, approve the final plat for Pebble Creek Phase <coughs> 2, Unit 61, subdividing 37.15 acres into 128 single-family lots and three tracks generally located north of the northwest corner of Clubhouse Drive and McDowell Road within the Pebble Creek Phase <coughs> 2 pad subject to stipulations. Item I, Adopt second supplemental resolution 09-1341, supplementing and amending the City of Goodyear, Arizona resolution number 99-662, dated January 25th, 1999, as amended and supplemented, which authorizes the incurrence of water and sewer revenue refunding and improvement indebtedness, authorizing the execution and delivery of City of Goodyear, Arizona, subordinate lean water and sewer revenue obligations, series 2010, evidencing a proportionate interest of the owners thereof in a 2010 purchase agreement between the City of Goodyear, Arizona, and a trustee, and the sale thereof to the purchaser thereof, prescribing the form and other details of the 2010 subordinate obligations, providing that such 2010 subordinate obligations shall be subordinate obligations as defined in resolution number 99-662 as amended and supplemented, approving and authorizing the execution and delivery of a 2010 purchase agreement, a 2010 trust agreement, a 2010 subordinate obligation purchase contract, a 2010 continuing disclosure certificate, and related documents, approving a 2010 official statement delegating certain authority to the finance director, 
authorizing the taking of all other actions necessary to the consummation of the transactions contemplated by the second supplemental resolution and declaring an emergency. Item J, adopt resolution 09-1344, ordering the sale of not to exceed $7 million principal amount of City of Goodyear, Arizona, general obligation bonds, series 2010. Okay, thank you. Uh, understanding that item 7H has been removed, uh, moved to the uh, business agenda, last item on that agenda. Would anyone in the public wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Mayor, I do have one. Roger Matlin would like to remove item I. Okay, would anyone uh, on the council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? I've got a question on J. A J, okay. I'm, I'm gonna remove item F as in Frank because of, uh, it I, I make it a habit not to vote on ADOT items given they're my primary client. Okay. And uh, Council Member Bazzillo, you said what again? I just got a quick question on J. J. Yes. Okay, and uh, Mr. Matlin is removing I, and uh, H was removed. Okay, let's start with a question uh, for Mr. Pizzillo. Was it Larry? Just quick on the on J. I, I see the GO bonds. Uh, some of it's for uh, sewer and wastewater. That's correct. Uh, primarily sewer and wastewater, a small portion, approximately $100,000 for streets for reimbursement. Is the debt service going to be secondary property tax paid, or is it going to be the enterprise fund that will cover the debt service? The debt service will be paid for out of the enterprise fund. That's what I need to know. Thank you. Okay. I'm All right. I'll, I'll remove it last. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's Do you have any questions? No. no. Okay. All right. Regarding uh, consent paragraph 7, uh, we'll remove H, I, and F. Understanding the removal of those, uh, could I have a motion to uh, approve all the items other than H, I, and F? So moved. Second. I have a motion to approve the uh, uh, consent agenda with the exception of H, I, and F. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Cavalier? Aye. Councilmember Antoniak? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Vice Mayor Lord? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Passes 6 0. Okay, again, H was uh, moved to the uh, business agenda. We still have I and F to deal with. We'll start with I, Mr. Matlin. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Roger Matlin of Goodyear, Arizona. And I had a question on item number I. Uh, the question had to do with how is the interest rate determined? Um, uh, and it basically, is this essentially just like a CFD? Um, and the reason I ask is because the CFDs that I know that are currently um, uh, established have interest rates that are about eight times what market interest rates are and I was concerned whether or not the residents are getting stuck with an overly high rate. Okay, I'll ask the finance director. Okay, and of course these are not CFDs but you're saying they're, they may be like one, is that it? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, this notes, uh, in, in fact, it says under the executive summary, it says a maximum interest rate of 9%. Okay. So it uh, just seems uh, a little bit uh, uh, usurious, I think is the word I haven't used for a long time, uh, with regard to uh, the uh, residents here in Goodyear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, Mr. Matlin in the audience, um, 
The, the wording in the resolution is a cap. It's a not to exceed amount. These will actually be going to market in, um, in uh, the first or second week in January is the approximate time. Uh, I just before I came up uh, introduce um, Sarah Smith with Gus Rosenfeld as bond counsel and Grant Hamill with uh, Stone and Youngberg is the underwriter in this particular transaction. So as the question was being asked, I asked in today's market, top of your head right now, what the interest rate would be and it would be approximately 5%. The nine is a not to exceed number only, and just for the legal documents. Okay. Is that it? Thank you. Any further questions on I? Could I have a motion to approve I, please? Mr. Mayor, I move. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve I. Uh, Councilmember Antoniak was a motion. Councilmember Cavalier was a second, I believe. Or vice versa. Way. And uh, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Cavalier? Aye. Councilmember Antoniak? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Vice Mayor Lord? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Passes 6 0. <clears throat> okay, we'll now move to F. Uh, Councilmember Antoniak has recused himself from F. Uh, I heard no further discussion on that subject. Could I have a motion to approve F? So moved. Second. Motion from Vice Mayor Lord and second from Councilmember Pizzillo. Roll call vote, please. <coughs> Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Vice Mayor Lord? Aye. Councilmember Cavalier? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Passes 5 0. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Antoniak's returning to the dais. We'll now move to the business part of our agenda. We'll start with uh, appointing commission members to serve on the Youth Commission and uh, Jennifer Campbell. No, it's not Jennifer. Good evening, Mayor Kavanaugh and Council Members. Um, it was a year ago that I did come before you uh, to appoint our first Youth Commission members uh, to our first Youth Commission here in Goodyear. And I'm back again for the second year. Um, our one-year term uh, commission members have expired, and we need to appoint new ones for January. So we went ahead and uh, did the same application process and, again, got some wonderful applicants. And it's a group of kids that... Someday you're going to rule the world, just like the other ones that are coming off, and it's just amazing to see what the youth of Goodyear are like. Um, just to recap, a couple of things that the first Youth Commission did do for this year was um, they did some shadow experiences. I know some of them wanted to do some with council members as well, and some city staff to learn more about city government. Uh, second project they did was to do a audit of youth and family programs, um, which Parish Spies was um, a large part of, and they will be uh, bringing that information to you as a council. And last but not least, they did do a youth and teen movie at the Goodyear Community Park, and they ended up collecting food and clothing for the New Life Center, and they got a great turnout, and there was a lot of clothes and food that went to some you know families that really needed some help. So this year, um, I would like to introduce them uh, before asking you to appoint them as your second Youth Commission members. Uh, the first one we have for a one-year term is Miss Rachel Green. And the ones with two-year terms, we have Samarth Bott, Cody Lewis, Aranid Prescott, Christian Walker, and Jared Wiley. So you're taking a look at your future leaders and perhaps future council members for the city of Goodyear. Thank you, Jennifer. Would anyone from the public wish to comment? How about any of the new commission members? Would you like to comment? <laughs> you don't have to, but you're good. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor Kavanaugh. I would just like to say on behalf of all of us, thank you very much for presenting us with this great opportunity. Thank you, all the council members. And I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us when I say we can't wait to work with you in the coming two years. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think I'll call for a motion now, and then I'll ask for any comments from the council. Could I have a motion to approve the commission members? So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion from Councilmember Cavalier and a second from Councilmember Osborne. All those in favor? No, let me now 
Anybody like to comment? Joanne, you'd like to comment? Well, good job, guys. Thanks for stepping up to the plate and being part of your community. I don't know about the girl on the end, though, Rachel. She <laughs> happened to be on the Teen Action Council, so I'm very happy that she's coming and being part of the commission. Very good. Look forward to uh, meeting each one of you and, um, and your suggestions and ideas for your city. Very good. Good job. Thank you. I just want to say welcome to the council, to um, uh, the youth Group, and it is uh, nice to see our youth is taking some interest and some pride in our city, and we're looking forward to working with you. I think Joanne said it quite well. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Welcome. Yeah, it's welcome. Good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. I know this is difficult to do because you're very, your, your time is taken up. Uh, but uh, So thank you for dedicating your time to your city. Appreciate that very much. All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? You're now on the commission, 6-0. How's that? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mayor Thank you. and Council Members. <clears throat> now I'd like to have a public hearing on an amendment to the uh, five-year consolidated plan. I'll open the public hearing and ask Katie Wilkin. Thank you, Mayor Kavanaugh and members of the council. The city has received a request from the Housing Authority of Maricopa County to support a multifamily rehabilitation project within the city of Goodyear. The project is located at La Jolla Court Apartments, which is at the southwest corner of Van Buren Street and La Jolla Boulevard. The complex includes 69 dwelling units, a clubhouse, and a pool. And there's a few pictures to jog your memory of La Jolla Court Apartments. The Housing Authority is proposing taking over this complex and rehabilitating it, reducing the number of units down to 59 units, and also doing some other things such as removing the pool and upgrading it. We have ha this is a, one of our older complexes, and so it's aging, and we have had some code violations at the area, have had some trouble with the way it's aging. So staff um, sees this as a very good opportunity to partner with the Housing Authority of Maricopa County to improve this existing complex within the city. If the council does wish to support this project, we do need to include this project in the city's consolidated plan so that they may apply for home funds. You may remember that we just approved our consolidated plan back in September of 2009 and that any project that gets done in Goodyear that uses home funds has to have that project within it. Not only does the project need to be in it, but also we need to include multifamily housing rehabilitation as a medium priority project in our needs assessment. In our needs assessment, it was indicated as a low priority. But looking at that, we think the citizens might have been looking at that and just knowing that in this housing market, we do have a little bit of, of a glut of rental housing, but we certainly do need um, rehabilitated rental housing. And especially at this complex, because we understand from the housing authority that they wish to serve disabled persons and most especially cater to disabled veterans at this location. And our disabled population was identified as a high priority population in our needs assessment. So we would need to change that in our needs assessment, um, multifamily housing to a medium priority, which is what we are recommending, and then recommending adding this project to our strategic objectives. The resolution would authorize staff to submit those two things to Maricopa County so the Housing Authority may apply for home funds. That concludes my presentation. Mr. Doug Linger and Mr. Bill Scalzo are here representing the Housing Authority of Maricopa County, and I'd be happy to take any questions, and I'm sure they may have a few words to add or have questions. Thank you. Okay, we'll certainly offer you that in a second. Any comments from the public before we do that? Comments from the Housing Authority? Mr. Lingner. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, uh, this is a property that's in foreclosure. Uh, we uh, uh, have a presence close by uh, um, in Avondale, so this is an opportunity for us to expand our presence in the West Valley by providing what I think is going to be a critical need, uh, affordable housing for disabled persons, especially veterans. Uh, we anticipate uh, uh, acquisition closing in February, towards the end of February. We're making an application for a number of other funding sources so we can do the rehabilitation quickly. 
Uh, we're excited about being a positive member in your community and serving a need, uh, uh, turning a challenged property into something that is a point of pride for each and every one of you. I'm, I can answer any questions if you choose. Okay, thank you. Mr. Scalzo, do you have any comments? Mayor Cavanaugh, uh, council members, uh, we're very excited about this uh, particular project because it provides us an opportunity to also, with your support in changing your plan, to go after neighborhood stabilization program dollars. I addressed you several months ago about that for individual homes. This will give us a chance to do it for uh, multifamily facilities, which is very unique. You'll be a model of how to provide those kind of services and bring more of those federal funds into Goodyear so we can do the rehabilitation, hire local contractors and get more work done, get these facilities so they'll be really something of pride for your community and provide very, very critical housing that we know is needed for especially the veteran population. In this state alone, there are 4,000 veterans without adequate housing. That's a disgrace in, in this country, and we need to do something about it. We believe this project can be a, uh, a very important one. This, uh, these units are 45 years old, so they're going to need uh, improvement. The funds we're going after from the federal government are all for rehabilitation. The Housing Authority would use its funds to acquire these, this complex, and we met today with representatives of uh, Fannie Mae in regards to the purchase. So we're moving forward with your support. We can then pursue those federal funds. So I want to thank you for the time and energy, especially uh, your staff, uh, Harvey Faust and Katie Wilkin, and especially Councilman Cavalier, who spoke with me several times about it and went out and took a look at it. Uh, we really appreciate your support and what you're doing to help us better serve the citizens of this uh, city. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll close the public hearing and uh, ask the clerk to read resolution uh, 09 1351 by title only. Adopt resolution 09-1351, approving an amendment to the City of Goodyear Needs Survey and Strategic Objectives for 2010 to 2015, authorizing the submittal of the amendment to Maricopa County and establishing an effective date. Could I have a motion to approve the resolution? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the resolution as read by the clerk. Second. Motion from Councilmember Antoniak and a second from Councilmember Cavalier. It's open for discussion. You want, to start? you want to both talk on the next one or this one or both? Um, well, pretty much this is, as Mr. Calvin said, this is something that we've discussed, we've looked at, and it needs to be done. Um, there are several details in this that we need to still discuss, but um, we have to do something with this property, and I'm, I'm very <coughs> happy to see that the county has taken this over and that uh, this will be used especially for our retired veterans and our veterans that are uh, I'm not especially retired. These are uh, ones that have been injured. Is this what this is, uh, handicapped? But um, I think it will be an asset to the city when it's completed. And I'm, I'm hoping that we do a really good job on this one. Thank you. Thank you. I, I had one. I'm sorry. I had a question. Uh, the... Uh, what I can tell here is that it's six hundred thousand dollars that uh, home, funds. home funds is budgeted now. Is that the money that's going to be purchasing the um, property, and uh, and there, then there will be no funds for um, adding um, items within the facilities to make it more um, friendly for dis disabled people? How does that work, or is this just the money to purchase the property? Mayor Kavanaugh, Councilwoman Osborne, uh, we will be purchasing, purchasing the complex from Fannie Mae through county public housing dollars, oh, okay. not HUD dollars. Okay. All the HUD funding that we'll be seeking will go for the rehabilitation. Okay. Okay. Great. No, I just have, being a wife of a, a veteran, 30 years in the military, it's, it's really rewarding to see our city step forward in a project like this. Thank you. I agree. Second that. Yeah, just thanks for taking a property that obviously needs a lot of improvement and putting it to good use. And uh, appreciate your presence out here in our community. 
For those of you that don't know, Mr. Lingner is a recovering uh, West Side Phoenix City Councilman, if, uh, if you didn't know that. So putting his uh, knowledge to good use. So thanks, Doug. Thank you. Okay, and we definitely thank the county for all you've done here. So thank you very much. Okay, could I have a roll call vote? Councilmember Antoniak? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Vice Mayor Lord? Aye. Councilmember Cavalier? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Passes 6 0. Thank you. I should have closed that public hearing, and I never did. So consider that other public hearing closed. <laughs> and I just opened the new public hearing. How much closed? And that's a public hearing to consider submittal of two community development block grant applications and one home investment partnership program. And Katie, you're back. Thank you. Once again, Mayor Kavanaugh and members of the council. It's time again to submit our CDBG and home grant funding for fiscal year 2010 to 2011. As you may remember, as part of the HUD Urban County Program, we apply to the county for our CDBG and home funding. Then the Community Development Advisory Committee makes recommendations to the County Board of Supervisors of what projects should receive funding and what those funding levels should be. Council Member Cavalier is our representative on that committee and Council Member Osborne is our alternative representative. The five-year consolidated plan was approved in September and any project we apply for for grant funding should be in that consolidated plan. Um, so far we've used um, grant funding for housing rehabilitation. Since 1991, we've rehabbed 88 homes and received over $2 million in funding for housing rehabilitation. We've received CDBG funding for water line replacement. One phase is complete, and we've received funding for a second phase. We also completed the Western Avenue project um, recently using CDBG funding, and we've received over $1.2 million in CDBG funds in the past years. For this year's applications, we're proposing submitting two CDBG applications. The first priority project would be a parks improvements project at Palmatier Park and Park de Paz. This would include security lighting, ADA pathways and ramps, and accessible playground equipment and surfacing at the two parks. And our request is approximately $550,000 for this funding. And just to show you, on the left is Park de Paz, and on the right is Palmatier Park. And both parks have very limited pathways, um, no ADA ramps. They have sand in the playgrounds, which can be a bit of a hazard. And the playground equipment is aging and can pose a bit of a safety hazard as well. The second priority project is for another water line replacement project in the Goodyear Estates subdivision, which is within historic Goodyear neighborhood. And for this one, we would be requesting $500,000 in CDBG funds. And the Goodyear States neighborhood is located here between Litchfield Road and Central Avenue around um, Loma Linda Park area. And this would be similar to the other two water line replacement projects that we've already requested. Now, we are required to prioritize the project. So right now, the parks project is first priority. But I do want to bring up to the council that um, one, there is very limited funding to go around to all the communities. There's usually about $2 million in CDBG funds and lots of communities vying for these dollars. In the past, we've received around three hundred dollars to $400,000. So we know we won't get our full request and we know we won't get both projects. There's also, um, the, as a whole, the Community Development Advisory Committee and the county doesn't always... Um, prefer parks type projects. They prefer infrastructure type projects such as waterline projects. So while we're while Councilman Cavalier is there fighting for our project, he may need to switch the priorities of the projects if it appears that we might not get funding for the parks project to make sure that we get some funding for our project. So we would really like staff is recommending that the parks project be a first priority since we haven't done any of those kind of projects in a while in the city but it is possible we'll get the water line improvement funding instead because the county prefers those type of projects. And finally, we also have one application in for home funds. We're requesting $75,000 in home funds. There is required match, and we do still have some credit in our match account, so we're proposing using up the remainder of our match credit. And this would create a 
total project budget of around $100,000, and that would allow us to rehabilitate about two to three homes in Goodyear. So that concludes my presentation. Um, I'd be happy to ask any questions. Um, answer any questions. <laughs> ask me. You can ask it. <laughs> you want to ask it now? Yeah, I might as well just ask it. Uh, at the Western Avenue uh, blue uh, ribbon cutting, uh, a lady came up to me and proceeded to tell me that the playground equipment was in dire need of replacement and that it was dangerous for the children. Have, have you been approached by that at all? So. Thank you. I'm sure our parks director, Mike Spetz, has heard this a lot more than I have <laughs> directly okay. about the need for parks, but we have heard that, and um, Mike Spetz has also provided me. We have, um, we have gone out and examined the play equipment and identified those hazards that are there, okay. and so we are aware of the situation, which is why we're trying to get funding for it. I, I would appreciate just a note to the council telling us which parks it are and what needs to be so we can address those on those conversations. We certainly will. Thank you. Okay, opportunity now for the public. Any comments from the public? Is again, this a public hearing? Yes. <laughs> Close the public hearing, and uh, I'll ask the clerk to read the resolution by title only. Adopt resolution 09-1350, authorizing the submission of two applications for FY 2010 to 2011 Community Development Block Grant CDBG program funds and one application for the FY 2010 to 2011 home program funds to the Maricopa County Human Services Department and authorizing the city manager to execute all documents relating to said applications. Thank you. Could I have a motion to approve to uh, approve the resolution 091350? I move we adopt resolution 091350 as read by the city clerk. Second. A motion from Vice Mayor Lord and a second from Councilmember Cavalier. It's open for discussion. Before we get to that, you had mentioned uh, prioritizing. Mm -hmm. Is that included in the motion, what yeah. you want? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Comments from the Council? Well, I have one comment, if you could, Mary. Uh, Mayor, on this uh, park to pause, I just want to tell the Council and, and the audience that. Um, there was a Saturday about uh, three or four months ago that we all got together, the neighbors and um, a couple of us from the city went to the park to pause and we did a repair on all the uh, children's playground area painting and uh, even we got the children involved in the painting and I think we painted a couple, of, they, we let the children paint a couple of tree stumps and it turned out to be quite a, quite a day and they brought a barbecue out and uh, so it, uh, a lot of this, bringing the people into it helps, and it's a part of making this more of a community. The, some of the parks do are in dire need of ADA, and that's a, a good sales point when I start arguing uh, <laughs> with the uh, other cities. But uh, the ADA part carries a lot of weight, so I, use, I can use that on that part of it. But uh, as Katie said, parks do take second place to some of the other projects such as the water lines etc anyway it's uh this is a good plan and i think it will work out for us thank you katie thank you just Mr. Uh, just a quick uh, follow-up uh, to the vice mayor's uh, comments on that list if you would uh john um if the ones that were identified potential costs associated with it and if we have funding or don't have funding or potential funding if you know, maybe needed to bring him up to, you know, up to code. I certainly will, Mr. Pizzo. Okay, thanks, John. Okay, our compliments to uh, community development, Katie and the IG, and uh, I want to really thank uh, Council Members oh. Cavalier and Osborne. This is a real time consumer. Thanks a lot of attention. So we thank you for signing up to this duty. It's not an easy mm -hmm. one since I've been here. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. <coughs> Vice Mayor Lord? Aye. Councilmember Cavalier? Aye. Councilmember Antoniak? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. <coughs> Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Passes 6 0. Okay, we'll now move to consider adoption of the resolution for a major amendment to the circulation element. And Joe Schmitz. Good evening, Mayor Kavanaugh, Council members. This is the uh, 
major general plan amendment for 2009. That's the only case that was uh, filed in this year was the case that we filed to amend the circulation plan. If I could have the PowerPoint too, please. Thank you. Um, as I noted at the last meeting, the roadway functional classification plan only addresses the street classifications from arterial up to freeway, does not get down into the collector level and below. And this is not the right PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so I'll, uh, uh, I'm going to have a problem at the end, Jeff, because the, you, you loaded the one from last time and it got changed. Um, but we'll forge ahead and we'll make it work. Uh, the changes that we had up to the plan were uh, changes in the functional classifications of some roadways, some of the alignments, some of the roadway name changes. Uh, we had a couple changes to the map legend. Uh, we added some new language uh, that addressed the new Arizona Parkway concept that MAG adopted. And we had some addition of a, dis a disclaimer to the map to indicate that the lines on the map are, are in some cases generalizations that may change after further study and development. And that's one of the disclaimers. We had a total of 41 proposed changes to the map itself. Uh, this is the breakdown by area, which I will not go through. <laughs> We did have uh, public involvement through in the form of three um, uh, citizen, uh, four citizen review meetings, three here in the northern part of Goodyear, one in the Mobile area. And we also had two public hearings before the Planning and Zoning Commission, one in September and one in October. The Planning and Zoning Commission uh, made a recommendation to approve the changes to the circulation plan as were recommended by staff with two changes. One was to item number 18 involving the alignment for Queen Creek Road in the vicinity of Rainbow, uh, just west of Rainbow Valley Road. And the second one was on items 31 and 32, uh, and it involved a shift in the alignment of the Hacienda Freeway uh, to the east onto state land instead of private land. And those two items were the focus of the discussion at the last uh, city council meeting. Uh, this is a, a graphic representation of the two alignments that, that had been discussed, whether the Queen Creek Road alignment, as was recommended initially by staff, should <clears throat> go th across the northern part of a 160-acre parcel that was the future site of a water and wastewater treatment facility, or whether it should go around the parcel, as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, as shown in the uh, uh, right-hand uh, part of the slide. Now this is the part we're going to have to bear with me because my slide is not going to come up. Um, at the last council meeting, we, we discussed those uh, potential alignments, and <clears throat> the um, potential impact on the on the 160-acre parcel. And since that meeting, we've had time to review the materials that had been prepared to date by Camp Dresser McKee, uh, the consulting firm for the um, project uh, in designing the project and also had additional time to discuss uh, the alignments with the adjoining property owners. And what we've come up with is a, if I will, kind of a compromise uh, position where uh, we would support, the staff supports the recommendation that was made by the Planning and Zoning Commission for the alignment that goes around the property, uh, primarily because it'll give us the most flexibility in the short term. Uh, but we have added a language to the resolution that provides that uh, the alternative alignment, thank you, Jeff, the alternative alignment will be considered during the design of the facility to, uh, so that it, it uh, can be, its feasibility can be determined that it, if it can be done without adversely affecting the site uh, in terms of the wa its use for the water and wastewater treatment facility or in relation to where the future Rainbow uh, Bridge over uh, Waterman Wash on Rainbow Valley Road uh, would be located. And in conversations with the affected uh, property owners, uh, they all now appear to be agreeable to that uh, s solution for the time being. And a, the, a new map and language in the resolution has been, or language has been included in the resolution, well, which is acceptable to the affected property owners. So the resolution that you have before you tonight has been altered to include that language, and the map that's attached to the resolution has been revised to reflect the alignment that uh, has been agreed upon. 
And then the second recommendation had to do from the Planning and Zoning Commission had to do with the Hacienda Freeway alignment. As you heard at the last meeting, we had testimony from the State Land Department that the suggested alignment that uh, they had made uh, was uh, agreeable to them. We had a letter from the adjoining property owner that was primarily affected, the owner of about uh, uh, several hundred acres uh, south of the, where the junction of the 303 and the Hacienda would come together also expressed support of the, of the uh, alignment recommended by the State Land Department. So there appeared to be consensus on that. So um, the, um, what is recommended and included in the resolution now is a revised map that shows the alignment that was suggested by the State Land Department and uh, the map has been adjusted uh, accordingly. So in summary, what is being recommended tonight is that the council approve the resolution as revised, uh, which includes the PNZ recommendation for the Queen Creek alignment together with additional language in the resolution body itself that provides uh, for the alternative alignment to be considered during the design of the plant. And then also uh, includes the alignment suggested by the State Land Department for the Hacienda Freeway. And as I noted, uh, once again, the, the resolution as revised and in your packet matches those recommendations and appears to be agreeable uh, to all of the parties. Uh, la one last uh, uh, note is that on a major general plan amendment, a two-thirds vote of the council was required. That, re that means at least five council members would, are needed to vote in favor of it in order for it to pass. Just wanted to point that out since we have one council member absent tonight. That concludes my remarks, and I'll stand for any questions. Okay, thank you. Do we have any comments from the public, including the landowners? Mayor, I do have three speaker cards. Of course, Roger, I'm one. The first one is Richard Cole. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm Richard Cole. My address, 11811 North Tatum Boulevard, Suite 1051, Phoenix, Arizona, 85020. <laughs> um, we've been processing uh, an annexation and um, uh, with various other things for about 1,300 acres that's impacted by this um, general uh, plan amendment. Um, our preference really is to keep it in the, the existing alignment. This uh, format will give us connectivity there's a question when that connectivity is going to be built. But I wanted to go on the record that my preference would be that it remain in its general alignment. I think it would be less costly and more efficient for traffic purposes to do that. So as that is, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Carr, Jack, and Michelle de Blasi. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Good evening. it's nice to see you again. Hope it uh, passes. Uh, we have had the opportunity to speak with staff after the last meeting regarding the alignment. Uh, we were concerned with items number 31 and 32, which I believe are as number two of the changes we're, we're discussing. What was most important to my wife and I and uh, another property owner who was here uh, during our last meeting was that the, uh, the Hacienda be kept off of private property knowing that there's ample public property to work with um, for, for the Hacienda alignment. Uh, we had a preference for a different alignment, but this alignment, uh, the state alignment also meets our needs, so I want to state our uh, support for that. And just uh, again note that this was one of those cases where fortunately there was an opportunity for this, the, uh, the public and the private to work together. Uh, instead of just having to figure out, well, it's got to go through private because there's no other option. There were some options here, and I appreciate your support for that. Thank you. Thank and you. I, would just, I would just add one thing. I did speak with the representative from State Land, and it's good to know that they're in support of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker, David Prescott. David Prescott with Newland Communities, 2850 East Calbeck Road, uh, Phoenix, 85016. Uh, first of all, Mayor and Council Members, I'd like to say that we agree with the Commission's recommendation and the alternative language as prepared by staff. And I'd like to thank Harvey Krause and Joe Smith for, for working this language out. It was very, very helpful. And I'd also like to thank 
all the council members that took the time to meet and understand this issue. Thank you. Mayor, I do have one more card. Okay. Roger Matlin. Okay. Mr. Matlin. Uh, good evening. Roger Matlin, Goodyear, Arizona. I'm sure you don't want to see me here more than once, but sorry. It's, uh, it's the holiday season. Such a treat. Um, on this item, I'm just kind of uh, a little confused. Uh, I've seen this now at two meetings where somebody from the city has gotten up, provided some kind of explanation on an item that is going forward, and they don't have the right documentation, they don't have the right information being presented yet, and somebody goes and gets some slides and comes back and provides some slides. And I would like to ask that you postpone this until the full presentation has been provided and it's a little bit clearer because being a, uh, a real estate person, a person that's gone out and looked at a lot of properties, I look at this map and I don't see any difference than last time. Uh, I look at some of the wording in here and I see parts that are crossed out. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's been finalized and I would just ask that you get it right uh, or the, the panel or, or people uh, working on this get it right and present a finalized document to the council because it doesn't seem like you quite know where you're going with this. And I don't think that's good for the city as a whole uh, or as the, for the residents that uh, you're not doing a complete job on it. So, and I'm waiting for your comment, Mayor Kavanaugh, because I can see you're ready to jump in. I just want to, are you complete, finished? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, just, just to. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Matlin, if you go, don't mind. Go ahead. Do you, do you live in a world of perfection, Roger? Do I what? Live in a world of perfection? Because it seems to me uh, that you no, do. No, no, I. You're insulting I, staff. I take a great deal of pride in our staff, and you insult our staff every single time you come up here. And we get the opportunity to respond to criticism, correct? That's right. Okay. So, Mr. Matlin, spare me, spare me your, your response, but every time you get up here, you, re, you, res, you respond to a technical glitch. You act like a guy that drives down the road, talks on his cell phones, never dropped a call, never made an error at work, or never frustrated anybody in his life. Meanwhile, you get a great deal of joy out of coming and demeaning our staff, and I am getting kind of sick and tired of it. Well, good, because you're doing a lousy job. Thanks. Um, and to answer your question, no, I don't. It's only major items that I think are going to have a substantial impact on the city of Goodyear and, more importantly, the taxpayers of Goodyear that I look at. There are a lot of little items that I just do not pay attention to and let those slide. So. Thank you. Just for uh, recollection purposes and for the public, uh, we did discuss this. I think it was our last meeting. I'm not sure if it was the last one or not. But uh, we spent some time in detail on this, uh, this major amendment, uh, and we came to an agreement, at least a consensus, uh, the five of us. Uh, Mr. Antoniak was, was not here, neither was Mr. Souza, so we held off final vote because of that. Uh, but uh, we uh, agreed with uh, virtually all the uh, stipulations except for one number 18, and in fact, we also agreed on 3132 that we should follow the. I think it was Michelle presented it from the State Land Department. So, so we we did uh, achieve agreement, generally speaking, on that uh, general plan amendment, not general plan, but major yeah. amendment to major the circulation amendment. element of the general plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, we decided that we would not vote on that plan until we had a better understanding of number 18, and that's what we have achieved this evening. So I thank you for yes. that. Okay, uh, seeing no further comments from the public, uh, I'll ask the clerk to read the resolution by title only, please. You close it. Adopt resolution number 09-1345, approving a major amendment to the circulation element, Chapter 3 of the City of Goodyear General Plan 2003-2013, 
including the roadway functional classification plan for the purpose of changing the roadway classification and or alignment of certain streets and revising the text to clarify some of the roadway functional classification terminology and modify the standards for a parkway and providing for an effective date. Okay, thank you. Could I have a motion to approve the, the resolution? So moved. Second. Motion from Vice Mayor Lord, second from Councilmember Pizzillo. It's open for discussion, comment. Councilmember Antoniak, would you like to start? Any questions you have? I just clarify for me where, where we're, I understand where we're at on 18 in terms of the recommendation before us, but what was the consensus reached at the end of the last meeting, if you don't mind rearticulating that? On, on 18? Yeah. It, was we, there we, not? We're, we did not feel like we had uh, what enough we information. Was five votes. What, we, didn't and have, and I we, we really didn't I have the information we wanted course, either. We didn't want no. us to suffer because of that. Okay. We wanted staff to go back and relook at it and talk to both all parties included. That's what I wanted. I was not ready to vote on it last time. I wanted more information and I wanted more negotiations and, and working this out. Okay. And thank you. You did it. The only comments I'd like to make is uh, I appreciate the fact that all the parties got together, Harvey and your team and, and uh, the rest, uh, and, and worked this issue out. Uh, kudos. Okay, I, I can vote in favor of this, but I, I just want to make sure. That what are the rights of the parties at this time in the future when we look at this again or the parties look at it again? Does Mr. Cole and others have equal rights in deliberation regarding this alignment? It's not clear to me. Uh, Mayor Cavanaugh, the way the uh, resolution is structured, it requires mutual agreement between the parties, and the parties in this case would be the city and the property owner, Newland, because, and that is because of the prior uh, development agreements that we have in place. But the consideration that we're giving is to the other property owners who have land in the area who are also affected by it. So the intent is to try to accommodate a, a roadway alignment through there uh, without adversely affecting the use of the property at, for the other intended purposes for which we have some of our contractual commitments already. So that, that was the, the main issue we were trying to work around, and I think that the language that we've included it, it tries to address that. So when the final decision is made, the staff will be considering the usability of this newland known parcel for a, to satisfy a wastewater treatment plant facility. Is that correct? In, well, at least in part. At least in part. Uh, the contractual agreements we have are actually for a water treatment facility. Not wastewater? The, not wastewater for the, for the development agreements that we have in place. A wastewater treatment plant is anticipated on the site as well. We just don't have an agreement in place that, that leads to its development at this point. There's other it's being satisfied with other facilities at this point. So um, that that's why uh, these contractual agreements are, have caused us to reconsider the position we had and, main, and maintain as much flexibility as possible that for the city uh, in the development of this property for those purposes. And hopefully through the design process hasn't gotten very far yet. It's only gotten to a conceptual uh, layout <laughs> And as that moves forward, then uh, we can determine exactly what will be going on the property and then what, how the roadway would or would not affect that. So it's incumbent upon the city in the next couple of years to, determine, to ensure that everybody is equitably and fairly treated in this regard. Is that correct? That they get due consideration, yes, sir. Okay. Any other comments or questions? No, I think we still give the, the <coughs> residents, uh, you know, by, by hearings, they're still going to be able to come again when that gets to that point, I'm assuming, and, and be express their feelings. Well, the... Because you've kind of left it in a way you're not sure which way it's going to go yet. Only as a non-agenda item, I think. Yeah, on a yeah. non-agenda item, but well, it, does, it does give people an, an opportunity. It, it, is, it is set up so I'm that the, uh, an alignment is on the map that provides connectivity to Rainbow Valley Road, and it provides an opportunity for an alternative alignment to be considered, and if agreed upon, implemented without coming back and amending the plan. I'm happy with that. 
you know, I, I just think it's an awkward uh, connection to, from Queen Creek Road to Rainbow Valley. And I understand the negotiations and the deliberations, and, but uh, I, I do hope that the city staff considers all the owner's interest when the final decision is rendered, That's and amazing. Newland also. Okay. I just add, consider not just the owner's interest, but the, but the traveling public's interest, you know, the shortest, shortest, most expeditious route. And if Newland, you find out you need a less of a footprint or, or in some way, shape, or form, um, uh, you know, I, I think the preference would be a, a quicker route over a, well. over a snaking deal around something. The current Queen Creek Road alignment sits in private hands, is that correct? Uh, Mayor Cavanaugh, Councilmember Antonio, are you referring to the existing dirt roadway? Yeah, that's that's in. It is in private hands. Yes. There's no public right of way there currently. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> We've had a motion and a second. Uh, <coughs> can I have a roll call vote? Vice Mayor Lord. Aye. Councilmember Cavalier. Aye. Councilmember Antoniak. Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Mayor Cavanaugh? Aye. Passes 6 0. Okay, we have one more item on our agenda. I guess it would be 8E, and that's uh, Oops. for those with their Which documentation in front of them, that's 7 H. 7 H becomes 8 E, and it's the uh, West Core Goodyear Agreement. Yeah. yeah. And I believe Mr. Fishbach will lead us off. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. On November 16th, you approved a notice of intent to enter into this amendment. Um, we don't have a presentation this evening. We thought that uh, it could go on the consent agenda, and it was simply an oversight that the state statutes require that it go on the business agenda, and that's why we moved it to the business agenda. Uh, we <coughs> recommend approval. We can make a presentation in detail if you'd like. Okay, let me ask for the public. Would anyone in the public wish to have a detailed presentation? <coughs> Doesn't seem to be. Anyone on council? You've heard it before, I know. Yep. <coughs> okay, then, uh, I guess, uh, Rourke, I'm, uh, I should move ahead and get a motion to approve it, correct? Yeah, have the clerk read the resolution. Okay. Go ahead, yes. Thank you. Adopt resolution 09-1349, approving a first amendment to the development agreement with West Core Goodyear LLC, an Arizona limited liability company for the commercial development on approximately 341 acres as part of a regional shopping center to be known as Estrella Falls, generally located between Pebble Creek Parkway and Bullard Avenue and between Virginia Avenue and Interstate 10 within the city of Goodyear and providing for an effective date. Mayor, I move that we approve the resolution as read by the clerk. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Antoniak and a second from Councilmember Pazillo. Open for discussion. <coughs> Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Cavalier. Aye. Councilmember Antoniak. Aye. Councilmember Osborne. Aye. Councilmember Pazillo. Aye. Vice Mayor Lord. Aye. Mayor Cavanaugh. Aye. Passes 6 0. Okay, thank you. It's now time for uh, Council to comment on any of the current events which I'd like to. Comment to the public on. Councilor Antonio. I, I just apologize to my colleagues, staff, and the applicants of the general plan amendment for not being here last meeting. I had a staff member ill on that Monday and was supposed to staff a public meeting of my own somewhere else, so I was filling in, and I apologize for, uh, for no my, need to apologize. my absence. It's fully well, understandable. No. Oh, I know. I just I wanted to explain it. Second, it, it came to my attention through some rumors at City Hall that perhaps somebody or some folks are not taking the uh, Citizen Committee seriously in their applications uh, for the Finance or Citizens Commission. And I would just ask the three of you that are evaluating those, uh, that when you recommend those, you look at people's previous employment and see whether or not they took the application seriously. Don't just take their name for face value. And uh, see that they respected the process and that they're going to treat the process of citizen input uh, with the respect that it deserves as you go through that. That's my plea. Hmm. Hmm. No. No. 
Um, I uh, attended as the uh, chairman of the Ambassadors GPEC Steering Committee, um, and we're planning for the process coming this coming year, uh, looking at a uh, new strategy and how we can assist in bringing more companies to locate in Arizona, as well as relocations from other states, such as California, looking at the goal of producing more jobs in high-paying positions. Also, the Audit Committee received the completion of the audits report, and it will be presented, I believe, this month to the rest of the council. Council uh, woman Joanne Osborne and I uh, attended the Christmas at the ball pipe, uh, ballpark with the lighting with the Christmas tree and welcoming Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus. And I compliment to the staff. Um, everything seemed to be very joyous and lots of um, play areas for the children and especially the room for Santa where he had a regal chair and the children lined up to uh, express their desires for Christmas. It was well presented. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I just, uh, okay. I w would like to, I was going to actually follow up with, with Mr. Antoniak. Um, very happy to see the citizens that have um, filled out applications for the budget committee. I know that, uh, I think it was close to 60 applications altogether, and uh, it's going to be good looking at them. Very, very uh, well done by our citizens, and I, th I thank them for stepping up. Uh, Mrs. Osborne, just uh, uh, technical correction, there were 72 applications. 72, okay. I thought there was cool. 60, yeah. Very good. Thank you. Now, Mayor, I just want to add uh, to what um, Councilman Osborne, <coughs> excuse me, Councilman Osborne stated on the uh, applications. Uh, I've already spent about an hour and a half with those applications, and uh, I think that you'll find this committee is going to spend enough time to be certain that we pick and select a good cross-reference, cross-diverse reference people from uh, our city for this committee. Uh, I'm pleased at, at the number of people, and I'm pleased at the diverse kind of people in their job and where they live and uh, everything about it. It's, it's going to be very good. It's going to be easy to pick a good cross-section. Yeah, I, I don't know about the rest of the council, but I, for one, if you come in with more than 25, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting a higher number if you think we need that, because there are outstanding people on that list. So. There's what? I agree. There are outstanding people on there that list. There are a very large group. And I, I would hate for some arbitrary number to cause uh, some who should be on it not to be on it. My personal feeling. Do we have a restriction? No. no. We put 25 uh, no. in the minutes. We put 25 in two alternates is what we, we, we yeah, 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 we're but, looking uh, for something manageable, so we, we'll discuss that when we kind of go through those. This yeah. yeah, we'll be discussing that. Too. Because we, we have quality people on that. Mm -hmm. we're, so. we're very fortunate in Goodyear. This is not atypical. It's the way it normally is. City manager? Nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. Any inquiries of uh, staff by council? I have one. Okay, now, I'm in my 40s. <laughs> However, um, the other night I was going, yes, I know, shocking. Um, the other night I was driving um, up Estrella Parkway to up into your neck of the woods, Frank, for um, a Goodyear in Action board meeting. And uh, I don't travel that way very often. Um, and it was dusk. And I will have to tell you, from about the point of King's Ranch to, say, Elliot, and this, this is the question for staff, because the road was terrible. I mean, there was the markers you could not see. The, the lines are only, there's, and there, you know, this is dark sky area. There's, there's um, the white stripes are not very visible. And then you have the, um, where you have the cracks in the road where they filled it with the, the black sur surly seal, whatever this stuff is. Sure. Which makes it look like those are the lines you're trying to follow. So I was just thinking, wow, this is dangerous. So I would like uh, to know if that's on the plan of being we done soon so I don't keep harping about it. But it was, you know, my eyes aren't that bad. <laughs> we will let you know, Mrs. I think I, I have you. one. Joanne just reminded me that uh, driving uh, Litchfield between I-10 going south and, and Van Buren and on the west side, 
the um, next to the curb, the palm trees and the trash, and it's on the it's the side the Cancer Treatments of America is on. It's coming up Litchfield. It really looks bad, and it's been looking that way for some time. I don't know whose responsibility it is to clean it up, but it really doesn't look good. I'll certainly check on it, Mrs. Right, thank you. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>